गुरुरेव गति गुरु मेव भजे गुरु नईव साहस्मी नमो गुरवे न गुरो परम शिशुरस्मी गुरो मतिरस्ति गुरो मम पाहि गुरो शुक्लांबरधर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्यानोपात वगीशाद्यामन सह सर्वाक्रमे युतकृत्यासी तमा गजानन दौर्भ्युक्ता चतुर्भ स्फटिक मणिमयी मक्षमालांदधान हस्ते नैक पद्मी चशुक पुस्तक चापरेण भाषा कुंदेन्दुशंख स्फटिक मणि निभा भाषमान सामेवाग्देवतेम निवसत वदने सर्वदा सुप्रसन्ना कूजन राम रामेति मधुर मधुराक्षर आरुह्य कविता शाखा वंदे वाकोकिल वाकेर्मुनि सिंह से कविता वनचारिण शुण्वन राम कथाद कोनयाति परांगति यिवन सतत रामचरितामृत सागर अतृप्त मुनि वंदे प्राचेत समकलमशम गोष्पदीकृतवाशीकृतराक्षस राक्षस रायण महामला वंदे नीलात्मज अंजनानंदन वीर जानकी शोकनाशन नाशन कपीशमक्षहता वंदे लंका भयंकर उल्लंघ्य सिंधोत्सलील सलील यशोकवि जनकात्मजाया आदाय तेन ददा लंका नमा तम प्राजलिराजनेय आंजनेयमतिटलानन कांचनाद्रिकमनीय विग्रह पारिजात चरमूलवासी भावया पवमानंदर यत्र यत्र रघुनाथ कीर्तन तत्र तत्र नमस्तकांजलि बाष्पवारी पिपूर्णलोचन मारुति नमत राक्षसातक मनोजव मारुत तुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमता वातात्मज वानर यूथ मुख्यम श्रीराम दूत शिसा नमा यणाजलि संपुटर हर सम्यक् पिबत्यादराद वाकेर्वदनाविंद गलित रायणाख्यम मधु जन्म व्याधिजरा विपत्ति मरणरत्यंत सोपद्रव संसार सविहाय गति पुमा विष्णो पदम शाश्वत तदुपगत सामस संधियोग समधुरोपनताक्यबद्धम रघुवर चरित मुनि प्रणीत दश शिश्चवधन निशाम यद्वम वाकि गिरी संभूत राम सागर गामिनी पुना तो भुवनम पुण्या रायण महानदी श्लोक सार सीर्ण सर्ग कलोल संकुल कांडग्राह महामीन वंदे रायण नम वेद वेद्ये परे पुंसी जाते दशरथात्मजे वेद प्राचेत सादासी साक्षाद्रायणात्मना वैदेही सहित सुरद्रुमतले हईमे महामंडपे मध्ये पुष्पकमासने मणिमये वीरासने सुस्थित अग्रे वाचयति प्रभंजन सुते तत्व मुनिभ्य परम व्याख्या भरतादिभि परिवृत रामं भजे श्यामल वामे भूमिता पुरस्च हनुमा पश्चात सुमित्रास्त शत्रुघ्नो भरत पार्श्वलो वायुवादिकोणेशु सुग्रीव विभीषण युवराट्ता सुतो जांबवा मध्य नील सरोज कोमचि राम भजे श्यामल नमोस्तु रामा स लक्ष्मणय दिव्य चै जनकात्मजाय नमोस्तु रुद्रेन्द्रय मनिभ्य नमोस्तु चंद्रार्कमुद्गणेभ्य धर्मात्मा सत्यसंद रामोदाशरतिर्यदी पौरषे चा प्रतिद्व शरैन जहिरावणी चक्रदेव प्रपन्नाय तवास्मी चया चे अभय सर्वूतेभ्य दनाम्येत प्रतम मनिषाद प्रतिष्ठातम शाश्वती सह यत्क्रौंच मिथुनादेक अवधी काम मोहित श्री हर ये बुद्धिर्बल यशोदैद निर्भयत्म रोगता जाट्यम वाकृत्व हनुमत्स्मरणा भवे श्री हर ये नम श्री हर ये नम श्री हर ये नम जानकी कांतस्मरण जय जय राम राम तपस्वाध्यायन तपस्वी वाग्विदर नारद परीपृछ वाकर्मुनिपुंगव परमाग्रहेण संक्षेपराण से भावा श्रवण श्रवण यज्ञ वह स्म we have all assembled for the shravana yajna of the verse by verse meaning of sankshepa ramayana purely by the grace of bhagavan rama this journey is going on and we are all able to enjoy 
Ramatva, Rama Gunas, as explained by Narada to Valmiki. In summary, Sanche Paramayanam is the first Sarga of Balakanda told by Narada to Valmiki based on the 16, based on the question of Valmiki as to who is contemporary in this world, who is living and who is having these 16 qualities. So Narada with the mission to find someone to write the Ramayana has come to Valmiki's hermitage and he is explaining the Ramagunas. <clears throat> we saw many Ramagunas and yesterday we, we stopped at sloka number, I think 40. I'll just, uh, we'll just go there where <clears throat> Rama, after meeting Bharata, convinces Bharata that Rama Paduka <clears throat> is the solution for both you and me, for following for you following your dharma and for me following my dharma. Paduke Chasya Rajaya Nyasam Dattva Punapanaha. He told Bharata that you please use this Paduka and use this as a representative of mine and rule. We saw how this could be a solution to everybody yesterday. Bharata returns to Ayodhya and in Nandigrama he keeps the Paduka and he starts ruling the kingdom. Rama is also absolved from coming back to Ayodhya uh, based on the request by Bharata and others. This is where we start. Now after that Rama decides <coughs> Ramas to Punara Lakshya Nagarasya Janasya Cha Tatra Gamana Mekagraha Tandakan Praviveshaha Alakshya, expecting that, expecting Alakshya, the meaning of the word Alakshya is expecting. So Rama expected that the citizens of Ayodhya, Nagarasya Janasya, the citizens of Ayodhya would start coming to Chitrakuta having known his place, his exact address, his exact location. They will start coming to the place and they will disturb not only his Aranya life, but also the life of the rishis who are doing tapas in that place. The rishis already, they had gone to the deeper forests of Dandaka after they realized that this has already become, people are coming to this place. Now, Rama also decides that I will have to enter Dandaka and uh, this is a big decision that he makes because <clears throat> uh, this is required because he wanted to, he wanted to, to definitely help the rishis with their objectives of in their dharmic objectives. Dandakan Pravivesha ha, that ha with great sorrow he enters the Dandaka because he is going to leave, give, go away from that place where he met actually Bharata. Next sloka is the 41st sloka, which is today's, which from where we start. Though here starts the Aranya Kanda. As for the story. Pravishyatu Maharanyam Ramo Rajiva Lochanaha Viradham Rakshasam Hatva Sarabhangam Dadarshaha. How does Narada explain Rama's entry into Dandaka? It is not like a Bollywood or a Hollywood movie he is explaining. He is also better than a Hollywood movie. So directly he says, <clears throat> Pravishyatu Maharanyam. Maharanyam. This Maharanyam is a deep forest, big forest. It's a it is by length also, by area and etc. It's a, it's a big forest. It is also deep. It means thick, thick forest. So Rama having entered the thick forest, lot, uh, what is the adjective given to Rama here? Rajiva Lochanaha, Lotus Side, Kamala Patrakshaha. Rajiva Lochanaha, Kamala Nayanaha, Kamala Nayan, people say, Kamala Nayan, Kamala Nayana Ram, Kamala Vadana Ram, Kamala Nayana Kamala Vadana, Kamala Charana Ram. There is a famous bhajan. So Kamala Nayanaha Ramaha. This Rajiva Lochana Rama enters the forest. What did he do after entering the forest? Viradham 
Rakshasam Hatva. He kills Viradha. A, dem, a, a demon named Viradha. Viradha. Sharabhangam Dadarsha. Dadarshaha. He saw Sharabhanga. He saw Sharabhanga. This is the 41st sloka. There is one more line which we can take it afterwards. So we will see the insights of these two lines. Dandakaranya. What kind of aranya we are talking? Why it is called Maharanya? It is a Ushna Pradesh, a very hot place. It is a dense forest, very hard forest. It is not the green forests. It is not like Uti or Kodaikanala or something. <clears throat> it is a deep forest. So what was Rama saying in entering Dandakaranya? One is he should not get, get disturbed by Ayodhya Vasis in Chitrakuta. That was one thing. He should know what is real Vanavasa. See, he has come for Vanavasa. So he technically what he could have done, he could have stayed in his Chitrakuta and said, my Vanavasa period is over. After 14 years, he could have gone back. You said me, I have to live in the Vana. Chitrakuta is also a Vana. But he wanted to experience the real Vanavasa, the real Vana Prastha, the, the real thing that the Rishis experience. See, this, is what, this was the intention of Rama, uh, main intention of Rama to enter Dandaka. I should really experience Vanavasa. Why it is difficult? What is the difficulty it is posing on the Rishis? How are Rishis able to live in these forests? The other aim was because of this Chitrakuta people coming and other things, that was another thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the other uh, word which is there in the shloka is Rajiva Lochana, Kamala Nayana. This Rajiva Lochana is an interesting word. Dasharatha liked this Rajiva Lochana, Rama. <clears throat> he had this lotus eyes. Rajiva Lochana also signifies Rama in his young age, Rama when he was a small boy, he used to sleep before the sun, just after the sunsets. Rajiva is lotus. When does the lotus open and close? Lotus opens when during sunrise, lotus closes when the sun sets. So as soon as the sun sets after his Anushtana, Rama used to sleep off as a small child. The Vyakhyana Kartas, they, they say that that is why he is called as Rajiva Lochana. This kind of Rajiva Lochana tender Rama, what is he doing? He is doing something which is impossible for a, for a prince like him. Because he is Mahabalaha, he is Vashi, he is Jitendriya, he is entering the Maharanya. That is the contrast which is seen in Maharanyam and Rajiva Lochana. So, Ramaha, Rajiva Lochanaha, Ramaha, Maharatyam, Pravishtavan, Yatra Raji, he enters the dense forest. Viradham, there what does he do? Viradham, Rakshasam, Hattva. He, he meets a lot of people. Some are Rakshasa, some are Gandharvas in the form of a Rakshasa. They would have had some Shapa. That Shapa would be released by because when they see Rama, so this Viradha is one Gandharva. He, uh, his Shapa is he will get tribulated when he meets Rama. So he keeps on troubling everybody. So he tries to trouble Rama and Lakshmana. Then Ra, he asks them, well, who are you? Then he, they, when they say Rama, he says, please liberate me. So by killing me. So Raksh, he kills Viradha and Viradha gets liberated by the Gandharva. Uh, by the Rakshasa farm and he becomes a Gandharva again. So, this is the liberation which Rama gives to Viradham Rakshasam Hattva. After that, he goes to the Rishis, the Ashramas of the Sages. There he meets Sarabhanga. Now, this Sarabhanga is a very interesting Rishi. See, he, he all throughout his life he has been doing penance. What does he? What was his aim of doing penance? He wanted to offer this entire penance to Rama. That was his goal. He was waiting. So when Indra came in between and asked Sharabhanga, "Can you come? Uh, 
to indra loka he says please wait i am waiting for rama to come so what does sarabhanga do he offers his penance entire tapas when rama comes to rama and he of uh, he gives his body as ahuti in the agni and uh, says that i don't want any janma anything i in front of rama i'm going to leave my body he leaves the body and he goes away so after offering <clears throat> after giving the tapas the, the tapas phala to rama arpana he he rama arpanam krutva tasya tapaha rama arpanam krutva saha atma hutim krutavan so he offered his body as ahuti after offering and the tapas to rama he wanted to do only this in his life that was his goal see these are some of the interesting characters that rama meets in his life sarabhangam dadarshaha sutikshnan cha pyagastyan cha agastya bhrataran tata tatha he also rama also meets sutikshna agastya and agastya bhrata in some of the commentaries they say it as sudarshana his name was sudarshana see rama rama on in his a main aim was to meet the rishis to understand their problems to see if he can be a solution to their problems he wanted to understand how a forest life is going to be how a ascetic life is going to be see these rishis are yogis they don't mind the scorch heat they don't mind the dense forest they have given the sharira abhimana they they have they are beyond their body they are only living in their atma their body they are they don't mind their body inside the uh, heat uh, inside the dense forest or whatever it is they don't mind the difficulties of the forest those these are the rishis that he is meeting now so and one amongst them is sutikshna agastya and agastya bhrata <clears throat> sutikshnan cha pyagastyan cha agastya bhrata rantata what did he do in shloka 42 agastya vachana chaiva jagraha indram sarasanam khaggancha parama pritaha tuni chakshaya sayakau very interesting things agastya is a maharishi what he should have done the agastya ashrama is being detailedly described later in ramayana agastya is a maharishi he should have put some akshata to rama sita be long live you. the king like that he should have blessed the king, rama lakshmana and sita instead of giving akshata he has he is giving a jagraha indram sharasanam what is sharasanam sharasanam is equal to bo dhanuhu ityartaha sharaha asyante kshipyante anena sharasanam by which the arrows are thrown on somebody sharaha asyante kshipyante anena sarasana ha dhanu hu ityartha sarasana now this sarasana bo from where did agastya get i indram he got it from i indra so he told agastya vachana chaiva following the orders of sage agastya rama accepted the bo which was given to him by agastya which agastya said it was given to me by indra now what is the story here after doing sufficient research we found that the bow that vaishnava dhanus that was given that was with parashurama rama after doing the parashurama jaya he gives that bow to varuna this varuna gives it back to his boss indra his master indra indra gives that to agastya again to give it back to rama so that it will be useful for the war later the war with ravana later so indra is the person who has given that bow to agastya therefore ai indram sharasanam now what is this sharasana what is the beauty of this bow it has got khadgancha paramaprita he also gave a sword and tuni tuni is equal to uh, tuni hi tuni tunaya tuni hi tuni tunai ha he gave two quivers what are these two quivers tuni is dvivachana two quivers one on left side one on right side you can have it both on the both on the two shoulders 
akshaya saya kau this what was the main feature of this uh, quiver akshaya saya kau it it could have it could have inexhaustible arrows so what is the concept here the concept here is it is a divine intervention by the devas to give these things to rama so akshaya saya kau is inexhaustible uh, arrow stand or whatever which is there quivers which are there in the shoulder so it will have say 100 arrows it can hold Ra it will have the rama namankita so each of these arrow will have um, at the end it will have rama rama it will be written now these arrows they are they are they, what they do they will go because they are rama bana they will do what they are supposed to do if they if it has to kill it will kill it will have to chase it will chase uh if it has to remove the lacuna in the person it will just touch him and make him pure uh so you see this akshaya sahayaka is actually uh, inexhaustible arrow it will go finish the work and come back but what is the uh, what is the main purpose of rama dhanu and bala he is to transform every vessel everyone into dhar dharma if he is not transforming he will be killed and he will go to swarga because it is rama bana which is killing him because it has the word rama in it the moment that bana comes and hits him this fellow will be seeing uh, and because it is rama bana he will go to swarga therefore anybody who is coming in the presence of ramas bana or dhanus he is uh, going to have two two or three types of transformations either he will uh, the it will chase him and it will it will transform him either it will um, kill him uh, after which he gets swarga so there is only benefit for this that is why it is called akshaya sahayaka akshaya means it will also give you good end akshaya sahayaka inexhaustible arrows rama banas will give you that good end this is the message that is being conveyed here so kadgancha parama pritaha parama pritaha feeling very happily agastya gives this uh, these things because uh, only a kshatriya can make use of it so uh, why he is very happy agastya wanted agastya uh, agastya sya that uh, two reasons for his happiness because rama himself has come to Ag to meet agastya and he is also happy that through the, the he has been an instrument for the devatas in giving these weapons to agastya <clears throat> now these rishis now the point here is rama is meeting many people many rishis each of them many rishis many gandharvas many rakshasas in the aranya and each of them they uh, they they get what they want from rama or according to the state of mind or their state they achieve what they want this is the secret of uh <clears throat> this entire uh, aranya kanda so we saw that sutikshna agastya agastya brata before that sharabanga before that viradha rakshasa so like this it is coming agastya vachana chaiva jagraha indram sharasanam khadgancha parama pritah tu ni chakshaya sayaka with great delight he accepted the indras bo along with the sword and two quivers which are inexhaustible we go to the next shloka vasatas tasya ramasya vaneva nacharai saha rishayo bhyagaman sarve vadhaya sura rakshasam satesham pratisushrava rakshasthanan tathavane the one half of the shloka which is khadgam cha parva pritah tudi chakshaya sayako it was done before now we are entering vasatas tasya ramasya ಋಷಿಸ್ <coughs> they have so these people have realized him some have realized him some have not realized him some they pen, they do penance on rama some they wait for rama some they know that he is uh, a king some they know that he is a prince some they know that he is searching uh, uh, he has come to 
uh, Aranya, he is trying to help the Rishis. Each of them are in different states. So Vasataha, Vasataha Vale, in, as though, as while he was living in all these things, all in this, uh, in these forests, Vale Varacharai Saha, along with the Varacharai, he, Varacharas, people who roam in the forest, they are called as Varacharaha, Vale Charantiti, Varacharaha, or Vanaprastaha, Rishayaha, Rishi, Vanacharaihi, Rishibihi, Saha, Vanaprastai Saha, Saha, uh, he was living along with them. What did this Rishis do? Rishayo Bhyagaman Sarve, Vadhaya, Vadhaya Asura Rakshasam. They all came, Abhyagaman Sarve, they all came to him. They asked him, Please help us. Asura Rakshasam, these Asuras and Rakshasas are troubling us. <coughs> they are destroying the ecosystem of these Rishis. And please protect us from this. See, you are going to stay for how many years, we don't know. As long as you are staying in this Tandaka, please help us, you are a Kshatriya. Please help us. And uh, from these demons and Asuras, previously I have, I have discussed that what is the, why these Asuras and Rakshasas, they try to trouble the Rishis. The Rishis do lot of sacrifices, praising the gods and for the sake of the welfare of the gods. So when they do lot of sacrifices for the welfare of the gods, the gods become powerful. When they become powerful, they grant all the boons and they shower rain and they do lot of things for the earth. So this is the Parasparam Bhava Yantaha Shreya Parvavapsha. This is the Paraspara Bhava between Rishis and Devatas. So if gods become powerful, uh, the Rakshasas are at uh, are in a dilemma because they between when the fight between Rakshasas and uh, the Devas occur, it is always the Devas are winning because of the prayers or the homas and the yagas of these rishis. Now, therefore, these Rakshasas they always want to destroy these uh, rishis. This is the this is how that thing works. So, Vadhaya Sura Rakshasam. So they say the, the, all the rishis came to Rama and they said these asuras and rakshasas have to be killed. Satesham Pratishushrava. Pratishushrava. First time Rama is taking a pratigya. He is telling, I take, I, he, he himself take a pratigya. Pratishushrava, he promised he takes a pratigya. Rakshasanam Tathavane, I will definitely take care, I will protect you from those rakshasas. If they if they are to be destroyed, I will kill them. I will do whatever I need to do <clears throat> for the sake of your welfare. Now, this, the, the, the beauty here is, see, you see, Satesham Pratishushrava Rakshasaran Tathavane. What made Rama take this Pratigya? This is the insight we have to see. The insight here is, yes. Rama takes this Pratigya because he now understands the reason why he came to the forest. He being a man, if you think from a Manusha angle, now he understands. He Kaikeyi has sent me to forest. Uh, Dasharatha has sent me to forest. All these things have happened. Why is this happening to me? Now he understands. It is because I, as a king, should know what uh, what is the difficulty that these people are go, are entering in the forest. They are also my subjects. They are also my prajas. I should know them. I should know the difficulties. And it is my duty as a kshatriya to destroy the rakshasas and protect uh, the rishis. It, if somebody is getting troubled, it is my duty to protect the prajas. If I were in Ayodhya, I would not have known the difficulties of these people. They, they would have come near to, they should have, so what should, what could have happened if he was, Rama was in Ayodhya, they, all these rishis should uh, decide for a trip to Ayodhya and they come and tell the Raja that, okay, we are all being troubled by Rakshas, please come and protect us. Now you see the opportunity given to Rama. Rama sees the opportunity that has been given to him. He immediately grabs it. He says, Satesham Pratishushrava, I promise that I will kill all these Rakshasas who are troubling you. So he straight away promises them. Uh, and uh, Rama is Rama Dvirna Vibhashate. He doesn't talk two things. Ra uh, and whatever is his Tankalpa, he is a Dhrinavrataha. Uh, so he is a Samadhivan. He knows what he is doing. He is fully under uh, his senses when he is taking this Pratigya and he is going to fulfill this Pratigya. 
and he realized that now for the next 10 years in this uh, vana, I have to protect these rishis and I have to kill all these rakshasas and make sure that rishis are very happy. This is the, he realizes his uh, reason for coming to the forest. And what attracted him to this uh, place and what attracted him <coughs> to this uh, thing and what is Pratigya, next sloka, Pratigya Tascharamena Vadasayati Rakshasam Rishina Magni Kalpanam Dandakar and Nevasinam Pratigya Taha, he pra, ra, ra, to the Rishis of Dandakaranya, what did our uh, Rama promise? He promised the destruction of the, all the Rakshasas. He said, and why did he promise? Rishina Magni Kalpanam Agnim Kalpayanti Yete Rishayaha Katham Agnim Kalpayanti Vidhina Pratidinam Samskurvanti Agni Kalpanam Tesham Every day they worship Agni. Either they do their Nityanushthana Agnikarya, Agnihotra, uh, everything they do, and they do the Yaga Yajnas also. They are Nityagnihotris. Now, they are, that is why they are called Agni Kalpana. This is one reason. Agni Kalpana also means Agni Sadrshaha. Their, their luster, their uh, brilliance on the face was as brilliant like a fire, as lustrous as a fire. Agni Kalpana, because these rishis were as lustrous as a fire, Rama promised the destruction of the Rakshasas in the battlefield, Sayati. Even if I have to wage a war against these Rakshasas, if it results in a war, if it is one-on-one -on -one combat, it is okay. If all these Rakshasas come together and they fight a war against me, then also it is okay. This is the way Rama takes the Pratigya and he promises the Rishis that he will uh, <coughs> kill the Rakshasas. Next sloka. Tera tatrai vavasata janasthana nivasini virupita shurpanaka rakshasi kamarupini. Now, where did Rama live? What was the strategy he adopted for living amongst these rishis, rishis when he entered Dandakaranya? Vane Vanacharai Saha is one, one phrase that we have to take. The second phrase that we have to take is Janasthana. Before we get into this shloka, what is this Janasthana? We will understand. This Janasthana is the place where most of the Rakshasas are housed. Who has placed them there? Ravana has placed them there. So whenever Rama, Ra, Ravana wants extra force, reinforcement, he will call Janasthana and say, to the Janasthana people, please come. I need extra force to fight against the Devatas. Please come. So he has, a, Ravana has got an extra army in his Lanka. In Janasthana also, he has placed certain people. That is what is the, uh, this one. So Janasthana Nivas, Janasthana is a place where all the Rakshasas are there. Extra Rakshasas, reinforced Ravana. So these Rakshasas, they are guided by one, one lady. And her name is Rakshati Kamarupini. She is being introduced in this shloka. Shurpanaka. She is named Shurpanaka. She is a Rakshasi. She is Kamarupini. Kamarupini means one who could take any form. Actually, she is very disfigured Rakshasi. Very Ghora Rakshasi. But she can become suddenly a beautiful woman. She can become a deer. She can become an animal. Uh, whatever she can do, she has that powers. And because of that uh, powers, she is able to trouble the rishis and do whatever she wants. This is the surface meaning. So, tatra tatraiva vasata. So, it means, so instead of telling where the panchavati, the word panchavati, Narada here is explaining Janasthana Nivasini tatraiva vasata. Rama lived there only where this uh, Rakshasas, Rakshasas headed by Rakshasi Shupadaka lived. So, it means panchavati which is near Janasthana. Now this Janasthana, <coughs> see, Rama wanted to <coughs> do an encounter. 
encounter with the rakshasas how to encounter the rakshasas and really kill them you have to you cannot live near the rishi ashrama and wait for the rakshasas to come so he decides that he makes a strategy this is the insight he makes a strategy and he comes to panchavati jana which is near janasthana where the rakshasas are roaming in numbers too many numbers so you beat the lion in its den this is the strategy of rama let us let me go to that place where rakshasas are housed in maximum and see what these rakshasas are doing if they are traveling there and if they are troubling let me kill them there itself so he wants to uh, meet the rakshasas directly and that is why he chose us janasthana nivasini that is indirectly told by narada janasthana nivasini shurpanaka yatra asit tatraiva vasata they are only living this uh, this rama he could he encountered this rakshasi shurpanaka she came to him yadrichaya she came to him by chance he what she was doing she <clears throat> she she was roaming around suddenly she sees one small hut parnashala which is uh, made by lakshmana very nice hut ashrama type so she said till yesterday this hut was not there how come it has come here so sa she takes a kama rupini that's why she takes a different rupa and she meets rama virupita shurpanaka this shurpanaka meets rama and she gets disregarded that is what is told in sanchay paramayana but we know in the ramayana where valmiki is going to tell that she uh, she converses with rama asks him to marry her and all those things happens and uh, lakshmana cuts her nose and sends away all these things we know but the summary the essence is being captured by narada in sanchay paramayana virupita shurpanaka rakshasi kamarupini this is the kind of uh, treatment that was given to uh, shurpanaka she is uh, who was lived in janasthana so tata shurpana next shloka tata shurpana kha vakyat उद्युक्तान सर्वराक्षसान खरं त्रिशिर संचैव दूषणं चैव राक्षसं हु आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट गमन्स इन जनस्थान वन वाज नेम्ड खरा वन वाज नेम्ड त्रिशिरस द अदर वन वाज दूषण खर दूषण त्रिशिरस अलांग विथ शूर्पणखा दे ऑल वेर देयर सो तत शूर्पणखा वा क्यात व्हाट डिड द शूर्पणखा डू आफ्टर शी वाज डिसफिगर्ड बाय लक्ष्मण she goes to the place janasthana where these rakshasas are there kara trishira and dushana all these people are there she goes and she laments <clears throat> she shurpanaka vakyat by the words of shurpanaka she she tells a story the somebody has come there i saw three people there rama lakshmana sita they what did they do they try to disfigur me you see this is what they have done to me she cries shurpana kha vakyat what did this rakshasa suddenly these rakshasas they don't think much suddenly they said oh for they did they trouble you did they disfigure you did they cut your nose udyuktan they became udyuktan sarva rakshasan they were eager ready they were they suddenly um, they all became very active and they said let let us go and see what uh what is what is the status i will so first kara comes then dushara comes then everybody comes uh then karam trishira sanchaiva dushanan chaiva rakshasam so kara trishira sanchaiva all these people they came there what what happened to them when they met rama nijaghana rane rama ha teshan chaiva padanugan nijaghana rane rama ha rama slayed or killed them in the battlefield rane it was almost a battlefield battle between the rakshasas and rama tesham teiva padanugan because there were 14000 rakshasas padanugan indicates there were lot of rakshasas for, for 14000 rakshasas came and they they single rama single handedly he saw these rakshasas coming he told lakshmana and sita please go and stand there i will take care of them and he kills all the 14000 rakshasas nijaghana nijaghana killed rane rama ha in the battlefield teshan chaiva padanugan khara trishirasas dushana 
and the Shurpanaka has followed us. He, he killed all of them. Only Shurpanaka is left. She didn't come to the battle. That's why she's left. <clears throat> there was one more uh, Rakshasa named Akampana who escapes from there. So they both are left. See, uh, this is how Vijaghana, Rane Ramaha, he killed all the Rakshasas. Now, these Rakshasas, they were inspired or provoked by the words of the words of Shurpanaka who are in Jalasthana. Now, you see why, uh, what was the reason for Rama coming into Panchavati, which is near Jalasthana. Because of that, Shurpanaka came there. Because of that, he came in contact with all these uh, Rakshasas and his 14,000 plus all these things, etc., etc., he killed everybody. Now, you see the purpose of Rama coming and uh, meet the lion in the den. That was his purpose. That was his strategy. His strategy worked very well. Vane tasmin nivasatha janasthana nivasinam rakshasam nihatanya sanne tahasrani chaturdasha So I told already the meaning of this shloka. While living in this uh, forest along with Karadushana, Trishinas, uh, all this janasthana nivasam, all these inhabitants of janasthana, Rama killed them. In the uh, and the, what was their count? Chaturdha, Sastrani, Chaturdha. See, Narada is giving this count to Valmiki because he wants Valmiki to understand the depth of Rama's power. Single handedly, if one can fight 14,000 Rakshasas, how powerful could Ra, uh, Rama be? That he wanted Valmiki to understand. So, which is why he, he is giving the number also, though he misses some details. But he gives this important detail so that uh, Valmiki gets to know of Rama's power. So based on this, Valmiki is going to build the story later. Ravana, see, <coughs> without the next shloka is Tato Gnati Vadham Shrutva Ravana Krodham Urchitaha Sahayam Varayama Sa Aricham Navarakshasam Jnati Vadham. Jnati is relatives, brothers, cousin brothers. Now, who is this cousin brother? Khara is there. No, he is uh, uh, probably Khara. Uh, Khara is related to Ravana. He is a cousin brother of Ravana. In English, cousin brother is everything. A cousin is a, a different thing. So, Ravana's mother, mother's sister, he is also married to, he is married to Vishravas, another uh, Vishravas, and his son is Khara, I think. Let me see. Uh, so, Gyati Vadham. So, this is the, uh, this is the story. <clears throat> Gyati Vadham Shrutva Tataha. Now, Akampana and Surpanaka, they come to Ravana and they, told, they tell the story. They tell that how these 14,000 Rakshasas have been killed. Ravana ha krodha murchitaha. Now, this is how Narada introduces Ravana to Valmiki. This is the first word Ravana is coming here in the 49th shloka. He says, Ravana ha krodha murchitaha. What did he get? He was overcome with anger. Now, you see what is the Character of Ravana. Let us analyze this part. Character of Ravana is actually if somebody comes and tells a king that all your people have been killed, what should the king ask? What did you all do? Why did you get killed? Why did you enter into the war? And why did why had 14,000 people? Why did 14,000 people go? How can one person kill those 14,000 person? All this he should have asked immediately. But he didn't ask that immediately. Though he, he should have thought about it later, immediately his reaction was Krodhamur Chitaha. His reaction was he was overcome with anger. See, this is the kind of ra person Ravana is. Because he had placed those Rakshasas in Janasthana. Now, Janasthana Rakshasas have been killed means his ego is hurt. So, he is not thinking what has happened actually and what is the story etc. 
So we know that he's a basically he's an egoistic person, he's an anger, angry person. Uh, this is the ego that Vibhishra is trying to break. This is the ego that everybody is trying to break. Now, this ego Ravana could never overcome. Ravana Krodha Murchitaha. That is why Narada is introducing Ravana in Sankshay Paramana like this to Valmiki. Jnativadam <coughs> Shrutva Ravana Krodha Murchitaha. He was overcome with anger when he heard about the killing of his brothers. And what did he do? Sahayam Varayama Sa. Mari Cham Rakshas, Dama Rakshasam. Immediately he realizes, see, 14,000 Rakshasas have gone there. Mostly, let me see what is the strategy I should adopt. So now he starts thinking. Initial reaction was Krodha. He thinks that he can't go alone. And uh, he didn't want to encounter Rama directly now. So instead he decided that let me ask the help of Mari Cha because Mari Cha. He is there, he is an elderly person, he is a Rakshasa, he is living separately in an ashrama. Something must be there with Maricha, he must know some secret about Rama because of which he is secretly uh, located somewhere. Uh, and he is not indulging in this war and other things. What is the character of Maricha? Let me go and check. So, Sahayam Varyama, so I, can, I can maybe ask the whereabout of Rama, I can ask about, ask about uh, ask his help if I have to uh, take Rama. Meanwhile, see, Narada does not uh, talk about that uh, Sur Palaka told that Sita was beautiful and uh, it was for you that I wanted to uh, bring Sita. All those things he doesn't tell. So all this Valmiki, he wants Valmiki to visualize all these things and write write it later. That's why he doesn't tell that part of the story. This is, but he covers the main events and he wants to stress on certain things. <clears throat> Here. Tahayam varayama sa maritam maricham nama raksham. This maricha also was a rakshasa and uh, uh, he wanted to, Ravana wanted to take the help of maricha. This is the story. Now, what happened when Ravana comes to Maricha? Varyamana Subahushaha, Mariche Nacharavanaha, Naviro Dho Balavata, Shamo Ravana Tenate, Anadrutya Du Tadvakyam, Ravana Kala Chonitaha, Jagama Saha Marichaha, Tasya Ashrama Padantada. The way our Rama and Ratamala book. I just want to highlight one point. The way our Rama and Ratamala book is, the meanings and the scenes are together. See, suppose these four lines, they talk about Maricha. So all the four lines related to Maricha will be clubbed together and the meaning will be given as per that. This is how this book has been composed. So uh, request all of you to buy this book, Rama and Ratamala. I think many of you have purchased it uh, from Amazon. You can purchase, you can uh, also purchase uh, from directly from Vyoma. Vyoma will be benefited because of that. Uh, and it has got this, in this uh, book, physical book you have to purchase. If you are outside India, you can write to us. You will get a flip book copy. See, why I told this is all things related to Maricha are being clubbed here. So that we can understand what Na Narada is trying to, how he is trying to pose the character of Maricha now. Initially, he presented Ra Ravana as a character. Now, he is presenting Maricha as a character. Now, what did this Varicha do? Varyamana Subahushaha. Varyamana Subahushaha. In different ways, our Maricha, uh, many times, that is two times he goes and comes. He, two times is told in Valmiki Ravana. But here in Subahushaha, means many times, Varicha says, no, we will not do anything to Rama. Ravana goes back. He comes again. We will not do anything to Rama. That is what he is told in Sankshya Ramayana. But in real Valmiki Ramayana, we see that he comes two times. Valyamana su bahushaha. In many ways, in many times. Two is also many in English. So su bahushaha. Mari chena saravanaha. What happened was, even he discouraged or prevented Ravana from doing anything. Because why? And he tried to uh, now he tried to give him an upadesha. The upadesha that he gives is Navirodho Balavata 
ಕ್ಷಮೋ ರಾವಣ ತೇನತೆ ಹೇ ರಾವಣ ಹೇ ರಾವಣ ಬಲವತಾ ತೇನ ತೇ ವಿರೋಧ ನ ಕ್ಷಮ ಒನ್ ವಾಕ್ಯ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಐ ಅಗ್ರಿ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವೆರಿ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಬಲವತಾ ತೇನ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ತೇನ ತೇ ವಿರೋಧ ಯುವರ್ ಎನಿಮಿ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗುಡ್ ನ ಕ್ಷಮ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪ್ರೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಸೆಸ್ ರಾವಣ ಸ್ವೈ so he tells all the previous story but so maricha's character what is maricha's character maricha is doing good thing by telling good about rama and he is preventing trying to prevent ravana from going there that is what all of us will be thinking but maricha is a selfish person he wants to protect himself first see he knows ravana if he says how much ever he tells he has to now uh, agree to rama whatever ravana says otherwise ravana is going to kill him so maricha knows he wants to protect himself in order to protect himself as a rakshasa he is telling let us not go to him see if he was a good rakshasa who was transformed little bit though he was afraid of rama but he was not transformed fully because he would not have agreed to ravana neither he would not have agreed to or he would have told this janasthana people all these 14000 rakshasas including uh, khara trishira sandushana please don't touch rama he should have to given the same upadesha to them also so that they they would have not got killed but you see now he is trying to tell rama that please don't have enmity he ravana ballavata tena te virodha nakshama so please don't have your enmity with a strong person like rama iti mar das he tried to convince him many times and uh, see Maharicha is so afraid that Raka Radini Namani, when somebody tells the word Ra, he thinks, oh, mostly it is Rama who is coming. So his Upadesha is Bhaya Karana. That is why he is, uh, his Upadesha nobody heard. You cannot consider that it's the Guru Upadesha or Sadguru Upadesha or something. So Rama, what did Ravana do? Anadrityatu Tadvakyam. he disrespected the words of maricha so he said ravana ha kalajo kochodita being is uh, being <coughs> prodded by destruction by his own destruction kalachodita ha ravana ha kim kim akarot tasya ashrama padam tada jagama samaricha ha along with maricha he forced him to come with him and he went maricha went near his ashrama to the ashwa frama to do some mayavi work <coughs> see here the message is the message for us is words of maricha though were useful though were having some upadesha it could not be taken by anybody because it is these are selfish words whereas a sadguru always gives us good words to you now the word here we have to take is navirodho balavata is an important phrase here this navirodho balavata is a message it starts this is the message that maricha starts and uh, hanuman continues vibhishana continues please don't have enemy with rama please don't have enemy with rama there they said you return back sita but maricha says no let us not have any anything to do with rama all these thing navirodho balavata navirodho balavata this is something that this is a phrase which is going to continue later also <clears throat> see ma another point here is maricha was a was all the words navirodho balavata the word here is navirodho balavata is he really talking about the strength of rama balavata this balavata is strength strong <coughs> now you should not have enmityship with the strong rama what is the strength our maricha is telling maricha says rama vigrahavan dharma he is actually talking about 
Rama Virodha means Dharma Virodha. Anything that Rama does is Dharma. So if you go against Rama, that means you are going against Dharma and we should all not go against Dharma. This is the message that is given in that phrase, Navirodho Balavata. Maricha gives this, Hanuman gives this, Vibhishma gives this. Navirodho Balavata means don't go against Dharma because Rama is an embodiment of Dharma. With this uh, <coughs> insight, we will get into the next shloka. Te Ramaya Vinaduram Apavachya Nrupatmajau Jahara Bharyam Ramasya Gridram Hatva Jatayusham how fast-paced Narada is describing the events in the Aranya Kanda. That is the pace with which he is describing because he wants Valmiki to experience all this by his yogic power later, which is going to, which he, is, which he Saraswati, everybody are going to give him. Now he says, Tenamaya Vinaduram. This Mayavi, uh, Maricha is there, no? What did he do? He was successful in. Apavahya Nrupatma Jau. He was successful in bringing the two Nrupatma Jau, bringing the two sons of Nrupa, uh, that is Dasharatha, the princess, Duram. He was, he was able to take them away from the ashrama because that is the ashrama is the place where they have been, they are, it has been told in the previous shloka. So from that place, he was able to Mesmerize them and take them far away. By the, we all know how it happened. It was the Maya Amrika golden day which came and Sita asked for it and Lakshmana says, no, you should not go for it. This is a Rakshasa, Rama uh, sees the conversation between Sita and Lakshmana. They have this Rama, Lakshmana, Sita. Rama says, okay, if it is a Rakshasa, let me kill, let me follow it and kill it. If it is really a golden deer, I will bring it to Sita and give let Sita have and uh, play with it and uh, she can take it back to Ayodhya also later if she wants. All these things, the conversation happened, all these things, nothing is mentioned in Sanchya Paramayana. Uh, so all this is indicated by the word Maya Vina Duram Apavashya Nrupatma Jau Jahara Bharyam Ramasya Gridram Hatva Jahara Bharyam Ramasya. This is a very, very important event. Sita Paharanam. This is not an ordinary thing. Jahara Bharyam Ramasya. Abducting another man's life is not an important thing. This is what is being told because, see, if you sure. abduct a man's wife, it affects the wife, it affects the husband, it affects everybody. So this Ravana's ab abduction, it affected himself also. Later he's going to get killed. It affected Sita. She was in great sorrow. It affected a person like Jatayu. It affected Sugriva. It affected the Vanaras. It affected Hanuman. It affected the entire set of people. This is one event which affects the, so many people. Jahara Bharyam Ramasya. He kidnapped the wife of Rama. What did he do after he kidnapped? While he on the way, Gridram Hatva Jatayusham. He killed the Jatayu, Gridra, the eagle, vulture. This vulture <coughs> became a friend of Rama in Panchavati when they entered Panchavati. So it was watching, it was like a, it was watching Rama, Sita, and Lakshmana and was very happy and was trying to protect them. So when Lakshmana and Rama are away from the ashrama and Ravana kidnaps Sita, this uh, Gridra is coming and it is trying to, uh, by the word Hatva, we understand that the Gridra might have, must have resisted Ravana from going further because of which a fight must have ensued between Ravana and Gridra and Ravana kills the, kills means Hatva means he puts the vulture down. <clears throat> All these things we are understanding from Gridram Hatva Jatayusam. Now you see this sentence, Jahara Bharyam Ramasya Gridram Hatva Jatayusham are two events in Aranya Kanda, two Shoka events in Aranya Kanda, which Rama gets simultaneously. Rama is suddenly struck with two events which give him extreme sorrow. One is Jatayus, whom he considered equivalent to his father, father's friend, and father's friend is equal to father, and Bharya. His Bharya is being kidnapped. His wife is being kidnapped. So these two things are making him uh, full of sorrow. He is full of sorrow. So that is why Gridram Chanihatam 
Drishtva. Now, seeing that Gridra being killed, he comes to near the vulture and sees that it is having little prana and he sees that it gets killed. Shrutam, Shrutvacha, Maithilin, that uh, <clears throat> it was almost killed, but it was still alive. It told that, see, you are somebody, I saw Ravana taking, uh, taking Sita in a chariot and she went. That is what the Gridra gives the information based on the Shrutam, Shrutvacha, Maithilin. She was kidnapped. <clears throat> this is the hearing this reason. Raghava Shoka Santaptaha. Now he is stuck with these two sorrows. Now the Gridra also dies. He is in a sad state of mind. <clears throat> so Shoka Santaptaha. Santaptaha immersed in Shoka. Santaptaha. Taptaha Santaptaha. Immersed in, in the Shoka. Vilalapa Kulendriha. He Vilalapa. He cries. He, cry, he he laments, he says, he is extremely sad because of two reasons. First thing is directly that Jatayu has died trying to save Sita. So he is very much perturbed because of uh, a small <clears throat> carelessness from our side. It is unfortunate that Jatayu had to die. So, but he did not think like that. What did he do? Now, Raghava, the one question will arise here. Let me raise that question myself. One question will arise. We say we, we spoke about Rama being Vashi. We spoke about Rama being controlling his senses. All these things we saw. We spoke. How did Rama become full and uh, become engrossed in Shoka? Now, if you analyze this part, the Shoka is not for himself. He experienced the Shoka only because he knows that Sita cannot have the Vyoga from Rama. He is experiencing the Shoka that my Sita will be will not be happy or will, will be in totally in a sorrow state of mood, in a sorrow state of mind, having been separated from me. So he knows how Rama Viraha will create a Shoka in the mind of Sita and because of which he is in Shoka. That is why Valmiki said this, this is not Rama and it is Sita Yas Taritam Mahat. Because Sita is the center. Sita was such a chasty lady or a pativrata that she could bring in a Jitendriya like Rama, in a Samadhiman like Rama, in a Vashi like Rama, she could bring the Shoka. And this is the shoka that we are talking. And Hanuman sees this. He, when he meets Sita in Sundara Kanda later, he sees, he says, Duskaran Kritavan Ramaha, he know Yadanaya Prabhu. Rama is doing something great, which is difficult, extremely difficult thing Rama is doing. What? He is having his prana, he is still alive. When this lady, when, having been separated from Sita, he is still alive. That itself is Duskara for Rama. He realizes how inseparable Sita and Rama are and what is the shoka of Sita because of which now Rama is experiencing shoka samtaptaha. He is fully in that shoka. The other thing is the, the, the shoka is doubled because because a fatherly like figure uh, which is Jatayu was killed, lost his life because of him. So he Rama <clears throat> Rama is extremely worried that Jatayu has got this kind of death. So at this stage, he gives Jatayu a very befitting last rite. So as per the the Dandva, Agni Samskara he does for uh, for the bird. He does Agni Samskara for the bird. Dadva, because from the word Dadva, we know that Tata Stenai Vashokena. Now you understand he is still in Shoka, but in that Shoka also he is stable. He is Samadhiman. He is uh, Stita Pragya. He knows that he has to do the last rites for Gridra, for the vulture. And he is like, like, he not only does like the last rites, like what it has to be done for a bird, he also, like what he would have done for his father, Dasharata, he does the same rites. Uh, R-I-T-E-S, rights. That is the kind of rights or the uh, Antya Samskara 
ಅವ್ರದ್ದ ದೈಹಿಕ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಇಡಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಬರ್ಡ್ ಎ ಬರ್ಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ವುಡ್ ನೆವರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಐ ಫಿಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಟು ರಾಮ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಹಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ದ ಬರ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಮಾನ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದೋ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಕನ್ಫರ್ಮ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ವಶಿ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಮಾನ್ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಫುಲ್ ಫುಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಶೌಕ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟಾಲರೇಟ್ ದ ವಿರಹ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಮಾರ್ಗಮಾನೋವನೆ ಸೀತಾ ರಾಕ್ಷಸ ಸಂದ ದರ್ಶ ಕಬಂಧಂ ನಾಮ ರೂಪೇಣ ವಿಕೃತ ಘೋರ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಾರ್ಗಮಾನ ಮಾರ್ಗಮಾನ ವನೆ ಸೀತಾ ಸರ್ಚಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೀತಾ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ರಾಕ್ಷಸ ಸಂದ ದರ್ಶ ಹಿ ಸಾಯ ರಾಕ್ಷಸ ನಾವು ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಕಬಂಧ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ರಾಕ್ಷಸ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಅಸ್ ರಾಕ್ಷಸ ಹಿಯರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಘೋರ ದರ್ಶನ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಟೆರಿಬಲ್ ಆಕ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ಅಟ್ what was this awkwardness his face see imagine a person not having a face his face is in the stomach and he is you are having a mouth in the stomach and you are having two large arms which are like wood and you grab whatever you get and put it in your stomach and that is your mouth now this is the gora darshanam that rama sa kabandha nama roopena in the form of kabandha his name was kabandha he was vikrutam awkward gora darshanam terrible to look at bhayankara darshana ha ityartha rupena vikrutam not only he was ugly he had this uh, this kind of head inside the stomach and all those things <coughs> his uh, his hand is like a tree and all those things and he saw this kabandha while searching sita so after having uh, done the samskara of jatayu he sees a rakshasa while searching sita named Ra- kabandha who was very awkward and terrible to look at what does he do tam vihatya mahabahu he had these two arms no so our R- rama is also mahabahu he is also one with mighty arms so he cuts the arm of kabandha rama and lakshmana both they cut the arm of ಕಬಂಧ ಅಂಡ್ ದದಾಹ ಸ್ವರ್ಗತಃ ನೌ ದಿಸ್ ಕಬಂಧ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆಂಟ್ ಗಂಧರ್ವ ಐ ಸೇ ಸಿ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಗಂಧರ್ವ ಐ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಶಾಪಗ್ರಸ್ತ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಡೂ ಒನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಓನ್ಲಿ ಕಟ್ ಮೈ ಆರ್ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಅಲೈವ್ ಡೂ ಒನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಬರ್ನ್ ಮೀ ಸೊ ನೌ ರಾಮ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡೈಲಮ ನೌ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ನೌ ಐ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಒನ್ ಅಗ್ನಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಫಾರ್ ಜಟಾಯು ಟುಡ್ ಐ ಡೂ ದ ಅಗ್ನಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಫಾರ್ ಕಬಂಧ ಆಲ್ಸೋ then he doesn't do he tells lakshmana to do it kabandham dadah swargata saha he got it done. so he uh, kabandha also gets the samskara and he becomes a gandharva again now kabandha is very soft corner tam nihatya mahabahu having killed the uh, kabandha he had burned him this fellow reached heaven while reaching heaven sachapi kathayama sa he told sachapi kathayama sa kabandha told Shabari Dharma Charini. Now Kabandha was very pleased. He, he, he thought what else could have happened better to me. I was having this Janma with, with my head in my stomach and mouth near my stomach. And Vikrtam Ghora Darshanam, I was, I was like that to everybody. Now it was Rama who helped me by killing me and, and giving me the, uh, releasing me from this uh, birth. so he gives a tip he sells uh, rama rama so you see i know that you are uh, uh, <clears throat> you are having a mission so he tells an interesting thing he has a soft car he tries to help rama he says sabari dharmacharini please go and meet sabari she is a dharmacharini extremely powerful word dharmacharini he uses a very powerful word ಶಬರಿ ಧರ್ಮಚಾರಿಣಿ ಹಿ ಯೂಸಸ್ ಅ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಕಬಂಧ ಯೂಸಸ್ ಅ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಶಬರಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಧರ್ಮಚಾರಿಣಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಗೋ ಆನ್ ಮೀಟ್ ಶಬರಿ ನಾವು ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶಬರಿ ಶ್ರವಣಿ ಧರ್ಮ ನಿಪುಣ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ತ್ರೀ ವಿಶೇಷಣ ಸ್ಪರ್ಶಬರಿ ಧರ್ಮಚಾರಿಣಿ ಶ್ರವಣಿ ಧರ್ಮ ನಿಪು
First, what are these individual meaning of these words? Dharma charity, dedicated to dharma, one who follows dharma. Shramadi, one who is doing penance and leading the life of a tapasi. Dharma Nipuda, she, is, she knows the intricacies of dharma. Oh, these are powerful words. We will understand the insights of these powerful words. Oh, who is this Sabari? This Sabari was a tapasi. She was, she was an ordinary forest person who comes to the ashrama of her guru Matanga and she comes to Matanga Muni's ashrama. Matanga says, okay, she says, I will help you in all your ashrama activities. Matanga says, okay, you can help us. So this Sabari cleans, she cleans the ashrama. She keeps everything ready for puja for Matanga Maharishi. Her only dharma, Sabari, dharma charity, what is her dharma? Her dharma is Guru Susru Shah. Matanga Muni is her dharma. Whatever uh, Guru Susru Shah, the Guru Matanga says, she does everything. Now, Matanga Muni, when they all went to, when they were all getting liberated, Shabari asks, what is my role now? I also want to come with you because I have always lived with you. Matanga Muni says, no, there is some person who is going to come. His name is Rama. You please meet him. He is a great person. He is avatar of uh, Vishnu. You please meet him. And by his instructions, she could know that he was a divine person. You please meet Rama and then come. And he goes away. Now, this is the Jharma Charini. So, Kabanda knows that Shabari is waiting for Rama <coughs> and she was, she is Dharma Charini. She is following the life of an ascetic. Now, Matanga Muni has given instructions how to wait for him when Rama comes, what to do. All those things Matanga Muni has, has uh, told and she is following that. She is an embodiment of Guru Bhakti. It is Guru's, Guru who had told, Guru told, see, the Guru Matanga Muni told her that, see, we are all going to Swarga and Vaikuntha and other things to experience Mahavishnu. You are, that Mahavishnu is going to come and come to you in the form of Rama. So, Shavari is very, very uh, grateful to Matanga, her Guru. So, her Guru Bhakti is very great. That is her Dharma. And she, she calmly waits for him. Waits for Rama to come. Shramani, expert in following Dharma. Dharma ni, see, dhari, Dharma ni Punam, she is expert in following Dharma. What is the expertise she is having? She becomes an authority in Guru Bhakti because every day she is leaving the Guru Vakya. Today Rama is going to come. That's what she, she thinks every day and get, gets up. She prepares as though, she prepares the ashram as though Rama is going to come. She plucks the fruits, she flowers everything to keep ready for for the puja. She keeps it ready. She does not know when he is going to come. She does not even bother to ask anybody that he's, when is he going to come. She does not call up anybody. Has Rama left Chitrakota? What is, where is on his way? Is there traffic on the way? How, did uh, Rama encounter any, any problem? All these things she is not worried. She has extreme trust on the Guru Vakya, which is Matanga Muni's Vakya. She, Rama is going to come and he is going to meet me. That is the Dharma Nipunatva she gained. She became an authority to Guru Bhakti. Today Guru Bhakti means we are telling Ekalavya example. Let us also tell Ramayana. In Ramayana there is Sabari's example for Guru Bhakti. That is the Dharma which she is following Guru Sushrusha. Sramani Dharma Nipuna. Dharma Charini. Sramani Dharma Nipuna. These three powerful mates. <coughs> Kabandar says, Abhigachayati Raghavan, please go there. Then Rama realizes. At that time, he does not say, I am in search of Sita already. You are telling me to search another lady called Shabari and go there. What is this you are telling? He could have told and he could have ignored the Vakya of Kabandha and he could have gone. But by these powerful words, he understands there is something there. See, the power that something there is, uh, Rama is not going to miss, in, uh, miss, Rama is going to miss something if he does not go and meet Shabari. He is going to see the moksha of Shabari. He is going to see the Guru Bhakti of Shabari. He is going to see the Bhakti of Shabari. Shabari is not going to miss anything if Rama doesn't come. Shabari will wait, continue to wait for another thousand years until uh, Rama comes. That is the power. So, Kabanda wants to make sure that Rama goes. Shabari, that is why Dharma Charini, Shabari, Dharma Nipuna. All these words are used and Narada tells these words to Valmiki. 
Abhigacche Tiragavam, please go there. Abhigacha, Gacha, visit, please visit Shabari's ashrama. So after Kabandama burnt the body of Kabandha, Kabandha, while reaching him, he told, please visit Shabari, who is a Tapasi, who is a Dharmacharni, who is a Shramani, and who is a Dharmanipuna. So what did Rama do? So Bhega Chalmaha Tejaha Shabarim Dharma Sudhanaha Shabarya Pujita Samyak Rama Dasharata Pajaha. Rama did not ignore Kabandha's words. He went to went in search of Shabari and reached there. So Bhega Chalmaha Tejaha Shabarim Satru Sudhanaha. After re reaching there, what happened? Shabarya Pujita Samyak. He was worshipped by her. What is the puja that she offered? All of us will say she gave fruits. Which she bit in her mouth and gave the fruit. First of all, she did not bite any fruit, which we will realize later. She always knew which fruit from which tree tastes how, because she's been waiting for Rama from 13 years. So she knows. <clears throat> so she is waiting to give her the fruits. And what did she feel? The puja, what the real puja of Shabari is not the flowers, not the fruits that she offers. The, the Matanga Muni is Guru Bhakti. The trust on Matanga Muni, the Guru Bhakti that I will get Rama Darshana, that is what she offers to Rama. This is the first point. Shabarya Pujita Samyak, she offers her Guru Bhakti. She is standing on her Guru Bhakti, waiting for Rama. And that is what she is offering as a Bhakta to Rama. Now, what did she do there? In Valmiki Ramayana, we understand further. Pujita Samyak, what is this Samyak the present? After that, she treated him like an atithi. What did she do? See, Rama is now, has now lost Sita. He, he is homesick. He is 25 years, he is homesick. But, and he is daring for Matru Vatsalya. Now, Shabari is an aged woman. She wants to give that Matru Vatsalya to Rama and console him and release, relieve him from the stress. But she is a tapasi. She can't uh, tell where Sita is or she can't tell <coughs> uh, she can't um, uh, fight for Rama or do anything. She, what does she do? She presses his legs. Uh, she uh, she gives him fruits. She gives him ahara. She makes him take rest. And she releases his on the pretext of releasing on the pretext of puja. puja she releases his stress. Uh, and that is why she is Shramani in Dharma Nipuna. She knows the Dharma Nipuna. She knows how an Atiti has to be treated and what is the state of the mind of the Atiti, like Rama who has lost Sita and who is coming along with Lakshmana. <clears throat> he knows that, that uh, intricacy and she treats him properly as though she is a mother. <clears throat> so, now, after this, sir, the story is not told here that Shabari he attains moksha and Rama sees the moksha of Shabari. And then Pampati Re Hanumata Sangato Vanarenaha Hanumad Vachana Teva Sugrivena Samagataha. <laughs> Rama enters after carrying, crossing the Pampa River on the banks of the river Pampa. He meets whom? Hanuman. Sangato Vanarenaha. The Tha here is Ascharya. Because he is going to meet Hanuman, a beautiful character. This is according to Valmiki Ramayana. Rama and Hanuman meets, meet only in the Kishkinda Kanda, first time here. In other Ramayana, which is shown in the TV and all, we see that Hanuman is available before and all those things. That is not as per the story of Valmiki Ramayana. So this is the Prathama Samagama between a Bhakta like Hanuman and Rama. Sangato vanarena saha, pampati re hanumata, sangato vanarena saha. So Rama and Hanuman meet each other in near Pampa Nadi. With this, we stop today's class. We will see what happens in this Prathama Samagama and how Rama's, uh, the events in Rama's life, they change after the after meeting of Hanuman. Swasti Prajabhya Paripala Yantam Nyayena Margyana Mahi Mahishaha Go Brahmane Vyashvamastu Nityam Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu
there are some interesting questions uh, by Deepthi Bagini. We will answer all that in the last class. Okay. <clears throat> Pranam.